There's always this conversation about charging your adult children rent. And I want to show you exactly why parents out there have to charge some of their adult children rent. Because some of y'all raised really pathetic children or these pathetic children grew up to be pathetic men. And I just think it's important to have this conversation because I think this community has often talked about that. You know, we're chronically ill, we're, we're disabled, we're hustling, you know, we're trying our best to make it work in this hellscape of capitalism. And yet there's a whole group of people out there in the universe. There's not very many in my belief, but there is enough of them who just, in my opinion, take advantage of people, especially their parents. And I think regardless of how they were raised, they have an entitlement to them. That is the reason why parents need to charge their kids rent and or encourage them to move out of the house. Because I think it is beyond cruel to take advantage of your parents, which is different than doing your best, living out home and helping out as much as possible and being grateful for the fact that you have room and board. This man is not that. This man is entitled. Eight years of free room and board is long enough. That is the feeling of an upstate New York couple who has been trying to kick their 30 year old son, Michael Rotondo, out of their house. As incentive, they gave him money to get started. They even sent him several letters to vacate, but the son says he was not given enough notice. Uh, Michael has a young son himself who he lost custody of within the last year. And now these parents have actually gone to the courts and the verdict is that the judge evicted him. And I had a chance to speak with Michael moments ago. Here's our conversation. Michael, welcome. Hi. 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 Uh, Hi. So let me, let, me, let me start with, you're 30. Uh, right. The simplest question, do you not want to find your own place? No. Why not? I don't want to live there anymore. I, you don't I, want to live I, with I don't parents. like living with, no. Um, uh, it's not, it's, it's very tense, it's very awkward. It's, uh, we have to, um, you know, with the share space, which, you know, maybe the case with, with uh, where I would find myself afterwards, but um, I'd, I'd prefer to get out. Okay, so on the prefer to get out, let's rewind for a second, because it's my understanding you've lived, you know, at your parents' house, rent-free for eight years, and I know you do your own laundry, you buy your own food, but they asked you five times, please move out. I'm sorry, he's 30, but he's had eight years of rent-free. Does that mean he was paying rent in his early 20s, or does that mean... What does that mean? Does it mean that he was paying rent, but then he stopped? Oh, why couldn't you guys resolve this without the court? I would consider uh, much of uh, what they were doing to try to get me out as a tax, and what I was trying to, I was just, uh, you know, trying to preserve, uh, well, trying to do what's best for me, which is just, you know, let's try to be a little more reasonable. You know, I'll, I'll leave. I don't like living here, um, but I need, you know, I need reasonable time. and. Uh, as an example of this, the first um, notice that I received, the February 2nd notice, was basically, you have 14 days before you're outside in the winter weather. So the first thing I did when I got that was I, uh, I tried to, I made sure that that wasn't going to happen. I, I contacted the police department. I said, is this something that's, you know, that this could happen? And they're like, no, you can, you just call us. That they can't do that. And I said, all right. And I was like, all right. And okay, wait, hold on. Chad says, how do you raise a child like this? I genuinely think it wouldn't have mattered how you raised this child. So I do think some people are, I think they're ones. I think they're incapable of being introspective, extrospective enough to get to the next so they have to mooch. I think people who mooch, not all moochers are ones, but I think there's like, maybe he's a one, maybe he's not, who knows, on my level system, links down below. But I do think that regardless of how you raise certain people, they are going to end up like this. Now that doesn't mean they're destined that they, they, no matter what they do, but it's the fact that he is comfortable, which is what I think is interesting. It's the fact that he's comfortable. And I think that that's the thing that I find so fascinating about these types of people in these categories. And I'm fast. And I, that's why I think like you should either charge your kid rent or kick them out. Because again, it's about the disrespect. You don't need to charge your kid rent if they're respectable and you guys have a good relationship and you're comfortable with them being at home. But usually parents charge their kids rent for two reasons. One, they're trying to get the kid out of the house because the kid won't leave on their own. Or two, they realize if they don't, their kid's gonna take advantage and they're gonna feel entitled. And to be honest with you, I saw that with even like my own siblings and I. For some reason, like my siblings and I are very independent people. And when we live at home and we pay rent, it feels like, I've got, of course, like you can do two things in my parents' house. You can stay at home, but you have to help around the house or you can stay at home and you can pay rent without helping around the house. I always helped around the house, okay? But my siblings always paid rent because they didn't want to help around the house. 
And I think that's what's important because you are creating dishes. You're, you're taking up electricity. You are utilizing like, and you have a full-time job. These, I mean, my, my siblings are working. So it's like, you're not paying rent. You're my parent, your parents are already letting you live there. You, this is their retirement. Like you're impacting our parents' retirement. You should be able to like fend for yourself eventually, right? That's the job of a person is to eventually be able to fend for themselves. So you have to eventually like learn how to be an adult. And one of the best ways to train to be an adult is to learn how to pay rent, to learn how to be responsible. Like if my parents are charging you $600 a month versus the $2,000 a month that is for a one bedroom in California, they're giving you an opportunity to learn how to owe people money. They're giving you an opportunity to learn what it means to be on your own. They're giving you an opportunity without the actual impact of really renting on your own, by the way. Like, and then they're kind of like, it's kind of a practice run with your parents. Now, some parents take that money and then give it back to their kid when they move out. Some parents take it and put it towards their retirement. At the end of the day, it's still going towards the family. The the illusion or the the idea that people have, like, I can't believe your parents charge people rent. It'd be different if we were a community family and we all like helped out and we all did chores and we all participated and we all gave our parents, but we're not doing that. Like, we're not doing that. Like, we're living on the property, taking up resources, but we're not contributing. It's not like we're all living there and we're all like helping farm, you know? So if you're not going to help, then you should pay because you don't want to take advantage of the parents. Now, at the same time, yes, parents choose to have their children, but the idea of parenting is you're raising the next generation and you don't want to raise the next generation of moochers. You want to raise the next generation of like competent adults. So there's like an expectation that you shouldn't be able to mooch off your parents. And these kids, like this guy, be mooching. Nico, welcome to the memberships. Happy to have you, have you here. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's see. And um, I'm listening to you. I really am. But let me just understand, because I, I hear you on your parents giving you notices. The fact that you were on national television talking about moving out of your parents' house. You tell me you want to right. move out of your parents' house. Why don't right. you just move out of your parents' house like tomorrow? Uh, I don't have the means to do that tomorrow. OK, so, do you have a job? Uh, no. Are you trying to get a job? Because I, I read that one of the things your parents asked of you, there are jobs available even for those with a poor work history like you get one. You have to work. Are you working on that? Uh, I have um, I have plans to be able to provide myself with the income I need to support myself, but it's not something that's going to uh, come together uh, tomorrow. So I'm uh, I'm doing I'm trying to do what's best for me, and um, you know I do want to leave, and I want to leave as soon as possible. But you know it's not it's not tomorrow. Mm. I, I don't think it should have to be tomorrow, and. Uh, well, you want and it to be tomorrow. It just isn't tomorrow. <laughs> he has a concept. Of, I have a concept of a plan. Uh, I have a plan. It's a concept of a plan. <laughs> he's so he's so that meme. I have a, I have a concept of a plan. <laughs> because you don't have the means right. yet to make it tomorrow. Here, here's the next thing. Right. I mean, by the way, if you guys have not seen these videos, oh, it gets worse. Oh, it gets so much better. Wait until you listen to his story about why he doesn't have a job. It's so good. Hey, do you, you know, a lot of us have lived with our parents maybe a little bit longer than, than, we, than we wish we could. Please take a sip of your water. Uh, uh, do, do you not want privacy, Michael? I mean, do, no, you, I do you not want you know, relationships, boyfriend, girlfriend, friendships, space, not shared walls with mom and dad? I do want those things. Yeah. So your parents took you to court if, though, uh, to force you out of out of their home and, and you sat there and right. you represented yourself and you argued that you should have more time. I know that you, you know, you wanted the six months and I've heard you say, you know, ironically, by the time maybe you'll leave it, it will be that six months. The court didn't decide. OK, wait, OK, before we oh, this interview gets so good. Um, uh, chat says, wait, where did it go? Shoot. You said I read it really fast. It said um, uh, I would I would pay rent to my parents. But as long as I keep putting money in my savings, they're good. My parents tried that with my siblings. So my parents tried, you don't have to pay rent if you put money in your savings, but none of my, none of my siblings could do it. They couldn't do it. They didn't have the discipline. That's why you have to be taught the lesson. Like you had a chance to not pay rent if you could save your money. That was the idea too. Like I had one of my siblings move home, works full time, says, hey, I want to live at home. I want to save a bunch of money. Couldn't do it. Now, to be fair, when cars break down, when you have to go to work, I mean, sure, you get 6K, 4K, 5K here and there of repairs, it's like, it sucks. But also, it's the idea that like, 
if you don't have the discipline to save when given an opportunity, then you have to do other things. And that's what I think ultimately is the point. You can't just stay at home and mooch. You have to either put it towards your future or not, because the idea of living at home should be that you're saving for a house. When I hear those great stories about people who work a full-time job, they live with their parents and they save enough money to buy a house, that's great. That's beautiful, right? Like that's great. But that's the thing that I think is missing with a lot of these adult children, but specifically this guy, he's not gonna do that. In your favor, will you fight the court? Will you fight your parents on this? I'm going to send a letter that I've already prepared to my parents' attorney that says, if you, if you give me, if you uh, send an order to the court, it's a proposed order that is uh, for three months, um, I, and uh, there's a possibility the court won't accept that, although I don't think that makes any sense. I'm not a lawyer, I don't really know, but you know, I guess the court can just can, can deny any proposed order that they like. Um, but uh, I would say that to the attorney, I'm, I'm saying to the attorney, if, if you put this uh, proposed order for three months in, or a proposed, or, uh, proposed order for three months in, I won't fight anymore for the, the case. And okay. the ironic thing is that if they had sent me the six month notice to quit in February, it would have cost them zero dollars in, in legal expenses. So, okay. Uh Chad says he seems very autistic or something. Oh, he definitely autistic. This is autism. Like, this is, but it's not the autism that's making him a mooch. That's just him. <laughs> But he's definitely neurodivergent. That is a neurodivergent king if I ever saw one. But it's not the neurodivergence that's making him impossible to work. It might be his ignorance of his neurodivergence. Like, there is a possibility because 80% of people with, well, 80% as this is the number we throw around, 70%, 80% of autistic people don't work, which who knows what that means because plenty of people work that are autistic. But he might not know why he can't hold down a job. He might not know why he fights with everybody at work. He might not know why he's like experiencing like um, a rejection sensitivity. Like he might not know why, but that's, you know, it's not the autism. It's his inability to work with whatever his neurodivergency is. But to be fair, this is why I say, and this is why I say, and like, this is why I know people are like, why does Bernie think everyone's neurodivergent? I'm just saying you might be, and it might be the reason. This is why I'm getting assessed. This is why I want answers because everyone keeps telling me, oh, everything is easy, Brittany. Everything you're doing is easy. Like your job is easy. Everything is easy. And I'm like, then why am I, why am I dying under the pressure? And it's because I'm having executive dysfunction problems. I'm having energy problems. Oh my God, I have fibromyalgia. I'm chronically ill. Like this makes sense that everybody keeps telling me it's super easy and it's not, something is wrong. And then I'm like, okay, I'm not gonna ignore it anymore. I'm gonna go to the doctor. And the doctor tells me, oh yeah. And then I'm like, okay, what do I do? Now I'm able to win the game because now I know what to do. I didn't know what to do before. I was like, I keep trying to do things other people are recommending. And it's not working for me because those people are not dealing with my problems. They're not playing the same game. He has a reason why, but the question is, is he introspective enough, right, to, to get better? And we'll see. I want to know. I'm so dying to know how you feel about the next video I'm about to show you in regards to where he is, like, after this. It's really interesting, okay? Uh, yeah. Legal expenses aside and time spent in court, I'm sure you're irked. I'm sure your parents are irked, but, you know, you only have one mom and dad. And I, and I understand right. that you are probably more upset than even you're letting on, but, but don't you want to reconcile with them? No. No, I don't. No. Uh, I, mean, what, I mean, are you aware of the, of the component of, regarding my son and about mm -hmm. how I, I lost my visitation? Yeah, so right, right after that, they're like, well, we, you know, we want you to start doing, don't worry about your, your case, which was, that took, that's a full-time job, doing an, uh, setting up an appeal for uh, an order like that for custody and visitation. You know, what you need to do right now is get a full-time job and get health insurance or we're going to throw you out. And So do you hear him? I lost custody of my kid and visitation and then they have the audacity to like put this pressure of me being responsible on top of that. Do you think maybe that contributed to why you lost custody and visitation of your child? Like that's the irony, right? It's like you made a baby and you're not even allowed to be in that baby's life. And your parents are looking at their son like, oh my God, you're so useless as a human. You're not even allowed to be around your offspring. You need to figure your shit out. Don't you think you'd be able to probably have a relationship with your kid if you had a job? And the fact that he doesn't want to get a job because he wants to, you know, do his like, you know, get a kid or whatever, bro. The fact that he thinks he's going to get visitation without, like get a job, get an apartment, figure out visitation with your kid. He can't get it. 
It was- so he might be a one, right? Bryson says, giving me one vibes. Giving me one vibes, bro. Eat the cupcake, my bro. Eat the cupcake. Devastating to lose my son. And um... devastating to lose my son, but not enough to get a job. Discord says anyone who says your job is easy must not have a good imagination. I know I couldn't entertain people for hours, four times a week. Thank you so much. But honestly, I understand my job is easy compared to other people, but that's not the point. The point is all jobs are hard. If you're having a struggle that is like internal and you're wondering what's going on. I mean, the fact that I could take the two days to not stream yesterday because of my brain fog and my chronic health is amazing. And I take that as a blessing, but it's, I, like Abba said to me when we were on the phone, if you have the job is easy or simple, but on top of that, if you have these other problems, of course, it's going to be harder. And that's what it feels like. It's like, if you don't know you have other problems, then that feedback you get from people, that's like, it's easy. It's easy. is going to be so confusing. And that's why so many people in life struggle because they keep getting this feedback from people. It's easy. It's easy. And you're like, man, are you guys all doing this stuff for real? But a lot of people aren't. A lot of people are also BSing about how easy it is to do work every day. A lot of people are breaking down in their cars before work and then pretending like they're having a great day at work. So I think, you know, it's a combination of being humble enough to know that it's a simple job, but being also fair to myself and acknowledging like why it can be difficult because I have these things. And I think that's a combination of what's having happening with him is I feel like he's not acknowledging all the issues. So again, he says it's devastating to lose custody of my child, but not enough for you to get a job. So why are you struggling to maintain work? Because maybe if he was introspective enough to say, okay, I got to figure out why I'm struggling with work so I can see my kid again, that would be amazing. But see, he's not doing that. He's not doing that. I, uh, I was just, uh, it really, okay. it, I was done with them. I was done with them after that. I was done with them after that point. My heart goes out to you on, on the custody issue. Uh, sure, but the sure. other, the, la the last piece of this, Michael, and this is really my last question. There are a lot of people who have read about your story and the, the thought bubble is what is up with this millennial generation that you guys seem so entitled. Okay, first of all, he does not represent us. What would you say to, to those critics? I would say that I'm really not uh, a member of that, of that demographic that they're speaking to, of that group. I'm a very conservative person. The Ooh, ooh, what'd he say? Mm, what did he say? Millennials that they're speaking to are very liberal in their ideology. Um, this man, a stream, this man, a mod, this man, a discord mod. This man definitely out here watching streamers in his free time, bro. But you're 30, so technically, I think you are part of the millennial generation. I don't think oh, there's a delineation right. between... You're, you're she didn't get it. See, she's a boomer. She's not on the internet. I know what he's saying. We know what he's saying. She doesn't get it. She thinks he's saying he's not a millennial because of his age. And he's saying, uh-uh, I am on the other side of the internet. I'm not on... He's a Reddit... He's a Redditor. This is a Reddit boy. You're right. Um, but uh, when people speak to the millennials uh, and their... And the, their general nature as a millennial, they speak to more liberal leanings. In my opinion, so, do you, do you okay. disagree? Um, I don't think it's for me to disagree. I think a millennial is a millennial is a millennial based upon- He's not, get, she's not getting it. He's referencing a specific bubble, which I think is just so important. Also, NB, welcome to memberships. Thank you guys for being here. I appreciate it so much. Like, this is what's so interesting is like, he's hearing the propaganda that entitled people who don't wanna work are progressives. Cause you know how progressives get the bad rap of not wanting to work because they're like, this is a capitalistic hellscape. I don't wanna have to work. And then conservatives make business, like make videos about how progressives are entitled and they don't wanna work anymore. That's what he's referencing. If you guys watch conservative bubbles, that's like a very prominent. And so he's saying, I'm conservative. I'm not one of those progressives who doesn't wanna work. That's what he's saying, right? Um, EOS says, can you imagine this guy on a forum complaining about people should pick themselves up by their bootstraps? Worse, this guy is going to be the guy who's like, the system is the way that it is. And I know it's corrupt. And I know that I'm the only person who knows the truth about how the system works. Like that's this guy. On the, the year that you were born. Okay. But I think it's totally your opinion to say, you know, that that doesn't uh, uh, apply to me. And, and with that, Michael Rotundo, I appreciate you coming on. I truly wish you the best of luck. And, and I am a millennial. <laughs> That's his autism right there. Yes, Michael. Right. Thanks. Welcome. So that was one of the more surreal interviews we've uh, taken part of here in the last uh, little while. But I genuinely wish him and his parents luck. So funny. I love her. Okay, now. This is sort of an update a month later. 
This is this was six years ago, by the way. But this was a month after that interview with that woman. This is what he's doing now. I thought well, was my... now being six years ago. Story became national news was crap. I just need enough time. I don't. I don't need very much. You keep saying that, but uh, you've had eight years. A judge in Syracuse has decided it's finally time for Michael Rotundo to move out of his parents' New York home. I was evicted from my parents' home as a 30-year-old and made international news. Where are you headed? Uh, off to an Airbnb. Michael has his own, uh, has been on his own since June 1st and is still unemployed. This is just life now. It's just, you gotta clean these dishes. It's just life now. You got to clean the dishes. So he's cleaning it in the bathroom. That's what he's doing right now. You just clean them. Since I left my parents' house, it's been a little chaotic. I've been sleeping at Airbnbs. How I got this Airbnb was I show up and I'm like, oh, you know, I'm looking for a cheap place to stay for a while. And she's like, oh, if you haven't put up my fence, you can stay here for nothing. So. so it's not a traditional Airbnb. He basically is doing stuff for people and they're in exchange letting him stay in their spare bedroom which is not an Airbnb. So the Airbnb insinuates like money is being used or he's going through the website. No, 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 no. He's doing favors for people. And out of those favors, they're letting him stay in their spare bedrooms. Dug all these holes for me. He's gonna do some work. And he has a place to stay. He's bartering, exactly. He's bartering. For a little while. You're comfortable doing this stuff in exchange to stay here? Yeah. It works out really well. So it spends so Michael now spends his days working on a discrimination lawsuit against Best Buy, his former employer. Hmm, guys, what do you think happened between Michael and Best Buy? Hmm, what could this fine gentleman what could he have done to be discriminated against? Hmm. This specimen of a gentleman that he is. Hmm. What could he what could he be? What could he be working on in terms of this lawsuit? He has an eight-year-old son that he had out of wedlock that's always lived nearby with his former flame. He has an eight-year-old kid and he couldn't figure out how to get a job in eight years. That's crazy. This is what I'm saying. Just because you have a kid doesn't mean you're motivated to be a parent. Being a parent is also being reliable for your children. Can you imagine eight years have gone by? Oh, I bet he lived with his girlfriend before that. <gasps> you know how he said, I have only been paying rent for eight, or I haven't been paying rent for the last eight years. And I thought, well, what happened between being 18 and that age? I bet he was living with her. I bet he was mooching off of her and she kicked him out. I bet that's what happened. Mm, yep, 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 yep. Oh, that's embarrassing. Can you imagine living with your, and then she, that's what I'm thinking happened. I was harassed with my parenting time with my child. And I was her. Wait, wait, what do you say? I was harassed with my parenting time with my child. I was harassed with my parenting time with my child. What? Child, and that happened to me and not single. And that happened to me and not single female partners. What? Female parents. I was fired basically because I was a single male parent. Oh, I was fired basically because I was a single male parent. Hmm. Do we think that's why he was fired? I'm seeking almost four hundred thousand dollars. I have reason to believe that I'm not going to have to worry about a lot after that. What do you say to the people that are saying you're lazy, you're waiting around for this big windfall of money that you may not get? I'm going to get it. You can get houses for fifty. I'm going to get it. I like how we didn't say, I'm not being lazy. He's like, no, no, no. I'm going to get it, though. $60,000. I could get a part-time job somewhere. Wait. I'm hold on. It. What? You can, get you can get houses for 50 to 60K. I don't know where he lives. This is six years ago. Houses for 50, 60,000 dollars. I could get a part-time job somewhere and make $24,000 a year and just live in that house. What would you say to your parents right now? Nothing. And they turned your life upside down. There's really nothing I can say to them about that. I mean, there's really nothing like, hey, nuts to you. I don't think my relationship with my parents will ever really be mended. Don't break anything. You know what's crazy is this was six years ago, which means he's 36 now. He's nearing 40. I wonder where he is now. I get on my bike mostly. My parents stopped feeding me in like December, so I've been 
you know, buying my own food, preparing my own food for a long time. Oh my God, wow. Whoa, your parents stopped feeding you, bro. Time. These two cups plum tomatoes. I'm gonna have to ask somebody about that. How many ounces are in a cup? I hate to ask you a stupid question, but you just take the bullions and then they can just become like a cup of broth, right? I gotta do all my cooking in the bedroom. What is browning meat? Okay, I have been a room renter. I've rented rooms before. And um, I have done that. And I have had to cook in my bedroom. It is inconvenient. I've had a fridge in my room. I've rented rooms for like $500 a month. This was like 12 years ago. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. How much do you think he got paid to do this show? It's not a show. It's the New York Post. He's just being interviewed. He's not getting paid for this. Like he, it's just news agencies are interviewing him. If honestly, I'm surprised he didn't have a GoFundMe or something. Eight to 10 minutes. Jeez, this is gonna take a while. I know you're not supposed to. I'm gonna take the chicken. I'm gonna put it back on the same surface of the uncooked chicken. <sighs> you know... You know... Are the windows open here? No, the air conditioner's on. All I need is a can opener. Fern, can I borrow a can opener? I don't have a chef's knife. Thank you, Fern. You're welcome. It doesn't need to be perfect, it just needs to be edible. It's gonna smell like onions in here tonight? Uh, yeah. I love onions, though. There it is. The rice is overcooked, but that's all right. The Airbnb's daughter has a deal for five bucks, she'll do your laundry, but you won't fold it. I am where I am right now because of, of Best Buy. Because they found oh, because of Best Buy. Mm. You know what I love is that he's a conservative. That's my favorite part of this whole thing is that he's a conservative <coughs> who blames everybody else for his problems. And that's why he, oh, Best Buy is the reason hired me and they failed to promote me that I'm a victim of discrimination. If that hadn't happened, I would have a really good job with them as like an assistant manager. I could have made them a lot of money. Did you get a shot of that's not that fired out of my nose? You know what's interesting is he hasn't had a job for eight years or he hasn't paid rent in eight years. Which one was it? When did he get fired from Best Buy? Because that's the question, right? Because he hasn't paid his parents in eight years, but when did he get fired? Because he's only now doing this lawsuit now because he needs money, right? Mm. Good. My business is business to business IT. I'm not really growing that. The media attention has hurt my business. I had a big job, I guess, with a client. And then after that, after the news broke, I could not get them to respond to my email. Oh, you lost your one client because now everybody knows you're a bomb and a mooch and a bad parent? Mmm. Emails. I'm not afraid of my future. Everything's gonna work out. <laughs> Most of my income now is TV appearances and things like that. Alex Jones show and... Here's $3,000, my friend, so that uh, you can hopefully get on your own feet. He offered... For Alex Jones is eight. $3,000, my friend, so that uh, you can hopefully get on your own feet. He offered for me to be a reporter for the show. Yeah, how come you don't pursue that? Because I'm not a film, I'm not a, it's, it's a totally different industry. I mean, yeah. Okay, this is a one. A one is a person who even when given the opportunity, isn't smart enough to eat the f***ing cupcake. Eat the goddamn cupcake. You just got offered a job. A job that pays you money. By Alex Jones, who isn't the greatest, but he obviously is conservative, so he doesn't care. Right? And he won't take the job because, oh, it's a different opportunity. I'm not a film guy. You're a poor guy. You have no job guy. And this is what I say. This is the type of person that I'm looking at, and I'm like... It doesn't matter what resources you give this person. They won't take it. And everyone says, like, Brittany, there's no such thing as a one. People just, okay, yes. But also, this is not autism. It's not his autism that's making him give up every opportunity or be unkind. It, he is definitely neurodivergent, I think, right? I can't know that, but I think. And he needs resources for that. But that's not the reason he's not doing this. Many people in that situation, autistic or not, would have taken that opportunity. So don't mistake it as, oh, 
it's his disability. It's not his disability. It's his attitude. It's his personality. It's his value system. His values. Okay. Yeah, it's it's you know it's money, but like I'm 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 doing all right. Yes, it's money, but I'm doing all right. Cool, dude. Money from the Alex Jones appearance can keep me above water until the Best Buy lawsuit uh, is on your dock. Weeks? Months. Can he stay as long as he wants? I guess Michael and I will talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, tell me that is not wild. Tell me that's not wild. And this is what I say. This is what I mean when I say, like, there are people that are just mooches. They're ones. They're useless. Now, I'm not saying he deserves any consequences because he's useless. I'm saying that it is what it is. You know, it is what it is. And this is the part of the population who honestly, like, he should be able to get whatever resources is necessary. I actually, funny enough, think this is the part of the population that probably would benefit from some sort of monthly income and government apartment more than ruining the lives of people around him. But honestly, you know, obviously I see somebody like this and I think like until they're ready, ready to help themselves, like you can't help people like this. You know, like you can't help people who can't help themselves. And this is sort of when I do my introspection system, the reason I am obsessed with um, sort of understanding people and why they do what they do is because I see a person like Michael and I think, but why? Why would you do this to yourself? And then I have to radically accept that a part of this population will do this to themselves. I think people mistake, though, who is this person and who isn't. Like Michael said in the in initial interview, oh, those millennials who are too entitled and they don't want to work, those are liberals. Because conservatives think when liberals say we're suffering under capitalism and we're really like that they're all being Michaels. Some are being Michaels. Don't be a Michael. But a lot of them aren't being Michaels. And more than that, people are afraid of what it means to lose their, you know, their sort of minimal resources as it is. Because it's not easy to survive in the universe. It's not easy to be alive, which is why I recommend not having a child unless you understand the burden you're about to put on them, which is existence. You know, you really are. You really should take into consideration if you're able to. What life you're bringing that child into. What do you, because if your life sucks, what do you think that child's life's going to be like? And that's sort of the irony is like people who feel like their life sucks make babies. And you make a baby come into the world when you already think your life sucks. That's crazy. Definitely a weird decision to make. Mm, this source said, maybe I'm imagining it, but I see a serious lack of self esteem in him. I see a serious lack of everything in him, motivation, grooming, intelligence, uh, self-esteem, pride. Like, where is your Saiyan pride, bro? Not even 1% Saiyan pride. This guy got 0% Saiyan pride. Like, pride's a sin, but damn, it helps motivate you because you have something to live up to. Yes, exactly. Farha says he's, like, actively making his life harder. Exactly. Ones. Ones. Like you are actively making your life literally harder. And that's, you know, everyone does that on a spectrum, but ones are special. That's why I say, this is why we give the imagery of a one being a man or a woman and a person in the desert who's starving and delirious and somebody, well, not delirious because that kind of defeats the point, but is starving in the desert and you go up to them and you're like, here's a cupcake. And they're like, mm, I'm not going to eat that. And you're like, what? You're literally starving. Eat the cupcake. And they're like, mm, no. And you're like, nobody would ever do that. Nobody would ever not eat the cupcake. How do you explain Michael? Why won't he eat the cupcake? He is literally starving. And Alex Jones is like, here, do you want the cupcake? And he's like, no. And we're like, what? You just said you were starving. And then he goes, I'm doing fine. I don't need the cupcake. All right, buddy. Also, chat says cupcake merch. There's cupcake merch available. Please check the link in the description. Help support the content. I do have some cupcake merch available for you right now. Uh, Discord says, or not Discord, sorry. Chat says fear of failure maybe. Mm. I think fear of failure plays into so, I think it plays into it a lot more than we think it does. Even for well-intentioned progressives that I do meet who really struggle, they are afraid. 
so many people are afraid to like, like I said, lose resources. Like, let's say you already have resources coming to you, minimal, but they're there. The fear of going out on your own in a way that would cancel out those resources is so scary to people that they may keep themselves in a cycle of sort of like limited success or even failure because at least they have a little bit as it is. And if they get better, like they're going to get penalized for that, which is how America is sort of in a flawed, like it's flawed in that way. Like, let's say you're on like a, a um, you know, EBT or disability or something. If you, even if you get married in this country, you could lose your disability benefits because your partner makes too much or now you make too much as a unit. Like this is a mistake in the way that the system is built. People can't just provide for themselves right away just because they make $10,000 more a year. If all 10,000 plus is going to go to medical bills. So we need a way for people to move from like this position into a higher position. But I'm also open to people who genuinely can to be housed, to be given a monthly income, to be given resources. I do believe in that. Now, of course, this plays into so much about like, what is human nature? Like, how will people abuse these things? Look, everyone, someone's going to abuse us something. We have Trump abusing the legal system right now. We have Trump, who was president, who inquired in ways to get exempt from the crimes he committed through becoming the president. Trust me, if people want to take advantage, they'll find a way to do it. So I'm not concerned with those people. I'm concerned with the people who aren't going to take advantage because I think most people probably wouldn't. And I think a lot of people are just struggling. They don't know. They're not going to be the people who do it no matter what. You know what I'm saying? They're not going to be the people who work 80 hours a week or 50 hours a week. And honestly, most people aren't going to be that. And I don't want the world to have to be that. Ideally, the world wouldn't have to be a world where people work 80 hours a week unless they really, really, really wanted to because they wanted to, not because that made them better. And so if that's outrageous, what's the actual realistic hours a week people should be working? Let's say it's 40. How do we make a society where 40 hours a week is enough to be independent? And then how do we make every job sort of a livable wage. I think, and honestly, maybe this is too radical. I think every job should sort of be livable. I think unless it's part-time, um, it should be a livable wage. I think if you're working full-time for a business, we should make it so they, they can live off of that. Not luxury live off of that, but basics. And if you can't make it that way because businesses can't afford to pay for it, then we should have government monthly, uh, like, monthly funds going into those people that give them sort of an ability to still do it. Because I, I feel like you shouldn't be have to, you shouldn't have to work 40 hours a week and not be able to live full time off of that. I know it's easier said than done, but you know, I understand. Okay. Discord says people like this that I know who abandon their duty to their children often think the kid is better off without them. I don't think it's right. The right mindset, but maybe they're right in some ways. Sure. Maybe they're thinking my kid is better off without me. But of course, the irony is like your kid's not better off without you. They would be better off with a parent who, who wants to invest in caring for them. Your child is always better off with a parent who rises to the occasion. And I know psychologically you might be convincing yourself, right, uh, that you're not worth it and your kids deserve better. But you can be that better. You can rise to the occasion and your kids, your kids can have a relationship with you. So don't give up, especially not when you've decided to bring a, a whole human being into the universe, you know? Chat says, I work 40 hours a week at 20 an hour and still can't qualify for a decent one in, one bedroom, one bath. And I think, that's, I think that's the mistake of America. America has made a mistake of becoming a place where people who work full time can't afford a nice studio, a one bedroom, one bath, and not feel like nobody should be living in the slums. Like no one should feel like they have to, they have to live no one should feel like they have to live in poverty. Like we shouldn't even have poverty in the United States. And the people who are living in poverty, like they're not there because it's fun. Something is wrong. Something went wrong with those communities and it's not their fault. Something went wrong and I blame the system because the system is the one that sets people up for failure at the end of the day with its inability to give access to education, its inability or, ooh, you know how the system really fucks over people is by arresting people unfairly putting innocent people in prison, taking away people's right to education. Like the system is like ultimately the greatest threat to the individual. And yet the individual is still responsible for eating the 
and cupcake. It's a symbiotic relationship. The system can't get in the way of the individual and the individual still has to show up to work. You still have to be a person in the universe who manages their basics, how to be a whole human being. Okay. And how you survive in the world is a part of that. So Michael still has to eat the cupcake. Okay. And the system still has to get out of people's way. And when they both aren't doing those things, it's a recipe for disaster. Period. But the fact that the system wants to blame completely everything on the individual and the individual wants to blame everything on the system. You did not just fall out of a coconut tree. Okay. You exist within the context of everything that came before you. So why's my life a mess? Please tell me Cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Then